We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. In this world, there are demons. If your doors are open, they will come in. In this world, there are enemies. If you live the life of sin, Satan will come in. Jesus Christ said, the prince of this world, Satan is coming, but he has nothing in me. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Let me tell you one thing. There is something that is called astro right. A-S-T-R-O-A-L. Then right, R-O-I-G-H-T. astro right. It is the thing the enemy is holding against someone. Whenever they want to kill, they will ask them, what has this person done against you? Sometimes, if they can't hold anything against you, they will come and look for your trouble. They want to quarrel with you. They will tell you, I will deal with you. When you tell them, I'm going to deal with you first, they will say, they will not go back to their covenant and say, she told me, that she will deal with me first. And that becomes their right. It is the spiritual evidence they are presenting in their kingdom against you. Because they must ask them, what has this one done? Jesus Christ said, Satan is coming, but he has nothing in me. He has no astral right. He has nothing to hold against me. Some of us, we think that by praying and fasting, we have our protection. No, before praying and fasting, reconcile with who? With who? With God. And when you add fasting, you add prayers. Pew! In fact, God, Jesus Christ said, God knows your needs before you ask. And that while you are yet praying. He answers. If you love me, keep my commandments. And when you keep my commandments, whatsoever thing you ask in my name, <laughs> praise the Lord. Don't miss things up, please. Don't miss things up. The Bible is very straightforward. Look at John. John chapter 14. Verse 13. And whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he asks anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and I will give you another comforter. And he may abide with you, that he may abide with you forever. Praise the Lord. You see Jesus talking about keeping his commandments and asking from him. And he answering us. Three things. If we say we love him. You know, the Bible says that all things work together for the good of those who love God. For the good of those who do what? And Jesus Christ is saying, if you love me, do what? If you love me, keep my commandments. Not scream day and night and begin to question me. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are they called according to his purpose. Romans 8 28. Christianity. Should not be mistaken, please. How many of us have problems? How many of us? God is calling to himself today. Do you know that during the time of the children of Eli, they went to battle, they were defeated. And they said, we made a mistake. They defeated us because we did not go with the ark of the Lord. They now went home 
took the ark of the covenant and went to the battlefield. As in First Samuel chapter 4. When they got there, ha! They shout. Let me read verse 5. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth rang again. That means the earth even shook. Verse 6. And the Philistines heard the noise of the shout. They said, what meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord came, was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is coming to the camp. And they said, woe unto us, for there had not been such a thing thereof, uh, there to fall. When the ark was brought, the Israelites shouted, they said, yes, we have the presence of God now. People who were not seeking God, the priests, Hophni and Phinehas, were messing up the the, the sacrifices of God. They were sleeping with the women that were cleaning the temple. They used to sleep with them. When they went to war, they went with the ark of God, believing that no matter how they live their lives, God will still be with them. They never knew that the presence of God had left the ark. The presence that fought for them before had departed. It was an empty ark that was there. The ark was not God himself. The ark was a symbol of the presence of God and God's mercy. Jose, you have the mercy seat. But the Philistines told themselves, no, we will not give up. Let us summon courage. If we will die, let us die. Let us fight. They fought. They Killed the Israelites. Is it not 23,000 of them? How many thousand of them fell that day? Okay. Verse 10. As a fox, Israel fled. How many thousands? There fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. Verse 11. And the ark of God was taken. The two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. Two priests. The priests were killed. Priests of God, oh, priests of God. I mean priests of God were killed. They were killed. The ark of God was captured. And that was what gave birth to Ichabod, the glory had departed. I don't know if you are seeking God. If you are seeking men of God, better start seeking God now. Because we, who are men of God, a lot of times, we mislead you if you don't know. Many Men of God mislead their members. And today people no longer read their Bibles again. People going to church, mobile phones, iPads, no Bible. Even some of those phones, there is no soft copy of the Bible there. Let us draw near to God. Uh, before we round up, I want us to read. Psalm 51, 16 and 17. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. It is not seeds first. It is not sacrifice first. It is not all these things we do first, it is our heart first. How many of us can marry a man? Marry his money? Marry his bank account? Give us ATM card? 
give us the pin, give us everything we want, but we never give us his heart. How many of us can marry that kind of man? If you can marry that kind of man, let me know. Maybe if I see one, I can show you. He will give you everything you want, but he will never give you his heart. Can you go into that kind of marriage? How many of us can marry a woman? She will give you everything. All the money and everything by the heart. She will never give it to you. Can you marry that kind of woman? Eh? But can you, can you marry a man who has no money but is ready to give you his heart? Can you marry a man like that? Eh? People are not as real because I measure money. I know money makes marriage to be sweet. But how many of us can marry a man that has no money but is ready to work hard? And we really know that this man loves us with the whole of his heart. How many of us can marry that kind of man? Let me see your hand. Yes, yeah, sister, God bless you. <laughs> you can marry that kind of man. <laughs> okay, you can marry that kind of man. Eh? Okay, thank you. God is saying that he is not interested in our sacrifice. It is our hearts first and let the sacrifices and offerings follow. That is what God is saying here. So we may give all our belongings. But if our heart is not for God, if we are not seeking him with the whole of our hearts, we have not given anything. It is the heart first. A broken spirit and a contrite heart. God will never despise. Even if God is in a hurry, if he sees a broken spirit, if he sees a heart that is sorrowful, God will give attention to that person. How many of us know Ahab? Ahab, the most wicked king that Israel ever produced. The husband of Jezebel. Do you know that when Ahab heard the judgment of God and put on the uniform of sorrow and fasted and cried to God, <laughs> God postponed the calamity. Upon how wicked he was, there is not, nobody that God cannot forgive. So long as a person is still alive, God will forgive. God is calling us back to himself. Some of you will look at me and say, Ah, Hosanna, this Hosanna, this David. You are very righteous, so. But I am telling you, I am repenting every day. I have not arrived. That is the truth. I am working on myself. Do you know just yesterday, this yesterday, the Lord told me, Hosanna, before you leave this house in the morning, make sure it is a command that you must read a chapter of the Bible. You know that a lot of times when you come to knock our door early morning and we open for you, some of these times, we have not done our devotion. But somebody is screaming. Somebody is dying, oh. Somebody is dying. They will be hitting your dog. Boo -boo. Will you not carry your Bible and start doing your devotion that time? When somebody is dying. You'll be doing your devotion. Eh? <laughs> then you will not become that uh, priest. Who saw the man that was injured by armed robbers and went his way because probably he was going to the temple and refused to show mercy. You know the story of the good Samaritan. Sometimes after rushing out like that, before you know it, you have robbed God of, you have robbed both God and yourself the time of communion that morning. And God is not pleased with that kind of life. God wants us to attend to the sheep. But he does not want the sheep to take his time 
that we're supposed to spend with him. Our time that we're supposed to spend with God. He who spends time with God will not waste time solving the challenges of men. That's the word of man. Jesus will pray throughout the night. And when people go to him, he said, your faith has made you whole. Go and see. <laughs> and people will receive healing. Some of us, we spend very less time with God. And when people bring their challenges, we pray and bite and cast and bite because we spend time too less with God. So we spend so much time with people solving their challenges. It is not the will of God. Lastly, are you rendering any service to God now? Some of us, we sweep. Some of us, we have our targets. That this is what I do, to God, I do for God. Some of us, we give to the poor. Continue doing what you are doing while you work on yourself. I'm not here to discourage you. I'm not telling you don't sow seed into your pastor's life. That is not what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is that while you do that, don't forget your relationship with God. And if you have nothing doing for God, please start doing something for God. Be useful to God. Even while you work on yourself, be useful to God. Don't say until you are clean, totally, you will not work for God. No. No. Don't say until you have become super righteous, you will not work for God. No. Work for God. And continue to work on your relationship with God. Make decisions. Stand by them. This year, 2020, seek God with all your heart. And he will be found by you. Let's be on our feet. want to take some prayer points. I want us to pray this prayer and ask the Lord to open our eyes to see where we are getting it wrong. Where are you getting it wrong? Where are you getting it wrong? Are you getting it wrong somewhere? Ask the Lord to have mercy upon you. Just open your mouth. Ask the Lord, Lord, in any way I'm getting it wrong, have mercy upon me. My deliverance could just be in my money devotion. But I have left it. Lord, have mercy upon me. My deliverance could just be in reading the word of God. But I have forgotten. And I'm running up and down. From one church to the other. From one prophet to the other. Lord, have mercy upon me. My deliverance could just be in that thing that God says, be doing, but I'm not doing it. My deliverance, somebody open your mouth and talk to God. That my deliverance could just be this relationship that God hates. Oh God, have mercy. God, have mercy. God, have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Open your eyes. For the sake of those who are young here, and for those of us who have children, let me tell you one thing. There are people in this world, if you sleep with them, you must be reduced to square zero. I'm telling you the truth. I am telling you what I know. They will finish your destiny. They will finish you. They will finish you. No matter how much they say they love you, your life will become zero. I tell you the truth. And until you are delivered, no amount of, um, amount of uh, uh, effort you put into your life, you will remain the same position. You can never move forward in this world. I'm telling you the truth. They are everywhere. They are everywhere. They are everywhere. There are so many. Some of them, they just have covenants unknowingly pulling people down. They are like pitfalls. Pulling. There are some men like that. When they sleep with you, they drain your destiny and use it, take it to one kingdom 
and use it. Are you not seeing ladies, Yahoo boys are using? Eh? When they say, I say, they don't use this one. This one, they don't use this one. Are you not seeing people like that? Eh? Is it not last two years, whether in shop rights, a lady who was given uh, how much? Is it 50,000? He said, just do this. He said, oh, let this thing. I should just do this thing with you and you give me 50,000. She did it and ran mad. Is it ran mad or died? She died, Abby. How many of us know the story here? Yes. They use her. Lift up your two hands to God. Now, if you know any particular thing that is drawing you backward, before I pray for you, lift it up to God. Ask the Lord to have mercy upon you. Ask the Lord to give you strength. If you know anything, it could be the idol your family is serving. It could be what you are doing or what you have done or what was done and you are involved or you were not involved, but they did it and your blood is connected to it. Ask God. Mention it to God. Ask God to have mercy. Do you know that some children coming into this world, some saviors God wants to use. Sometimes when people say, children are bought the pregnancy and you encourage them, you share in the curse. The curse, you share in it. You become a part of the punishment because you encourage evil. Somebody is crying that I, I was not permitted to live my life. I was not permitted to save souls. The hand that killed me must pay. Meanwhile, you are a part of the hand that killed that person. Maybe you bought the drugs. Maybe you gave the idea, thinking you were offering solution. Can you pray for your family? It is not about going to church. Some of us, we even sleep in church. Every all night, we go there. We go to better. Anywhere there is better. Anywhere there is giga, we'll go there. But we don't seek God. Round up your prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Lift those hands up. Lord, we need your mercy today. We know that if we can settle with you, no power can bring any form of accusation against us again. Hey, God, if you can declare us free, no power can hold us in any form of bondage again. Lord, we lift up our lives to you. Wash us. Remove our guilt. The same way you send a cherub. The same way you send an angel. And he picked a life cold. And used it to touch the mouth of Isaiah. And he said, your sins are be forgiven. Your guilt is taken away. Lost. Oh Lord our God, touch us with that fire again. Touch us with the same fire. Some of us have opened our doors. We have messed up our house, your body. The doors, the walls are broken down. Enemies are coming in. Instead of us, instead of us to remove the mess, we are fighting the enemies. And more enemies are coming in. Lord, help us to remove the mess. Whatsoever thing that drove you away, help us to remove it in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the Lord, come into the situation of your children. Whatsoever way the devil has been destroying your life, today may the Lord give you freedom. Whatsoever way the enemy has been disturbing your destiny, Today, may God give you freedom. I release the power of the Lord upon your life. It is well with you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, as a way of continuing with this prayer, 
the Lord wants to do something in this house today. This is a new year. It's a new year. The year just started. If you want to sit, you can sit. Um, if you know you want to reconcile with God, this message now is about reconciliation. It's about you settling with your maker. Let me tell you. Um, when I know that I am right with God, I know some level of boldness I feel inside of me. I don't fear. When I know that I am right with God, some level of boldness, I know some, the Bible says that the lion are as bold as a lion. Proverbs said, the lion is the strongest among all beasts. And it retreats before none. He does not turn his back at anyone. If you want to, this is a new year, you want to reconcile with God. You want to put something straight. Can you come? I want to pray with you. You want to touch some areas in your life. Those areas. Those areas may be a very small thing. But you know the weight, the way it's pulling you backward. If you want to, can you just come? I want to pray with you quickly. This is a new year. I'm not talking to pagans. I'm talking to Christians. I told you, even me, I am repenting every day. And that's the truth. It is between you and God. You don't want to tell anybody, this is it, this is it. No, it's between me, you and God. But... Let there be a mark today. Let there be a mark. Is there anybody? Before I pray. Yes, thank you. Come forward. The Lord knows your heart. It is between you and God. You understand me? Thank you. God bless you. Brother, thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. It is between you and God. Sometimes in church, <laughs> the people God listens to are those who cry. After hearing messages, those who cry. Those are the people God looks at. More than many of those who clap. Do you hear me? Some people, today, after a sermon, people clap. But some, they bow their head and they cry. The ones that cry, most times, they are the people God gives attention. Lift up your two hands. Today, God will supply you grace, and you will have grace enough to live. Lord, help these ones. Whatsoever thing you are surrendering before the Lord today, it may just be worries. Maybe you are too worried. It may not be any sin. Maybe you just worry, and the worries, the worry in your heart is taking you away from God. Every time you are bothered about what has not been done and what was done wrong. Today, whatsoever thing you are laying before God, may God Almighty take it away from you. Any sin you are dropping before the Lord today, any lifestyle, receive grace to overcome it in the name of Jesus. May the faith that brought you out, may that faith sustain you to the end. May the faith that brought you out, may that faith stand by you all the time. May that faith uphold you in the name of Jesus. Spirit divine, you know this, your children. Come and attend to them specially. Come and attend to each and every one of them. May your life not be as turbulent as the sea. Receive calmness in your destiny in the name of Jesus. Receive life in the name of Jesus. In any way the devil has deceived you, in any way men have deceived you, today, Receive freedom. Receive your sight. Begin to see beyond the physical. Receive divine wisdom to live your life. The wisdom to maintain your relationship with God. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Father Lord, may these ones never go back to their life of sin. May they never go back to their life of worries. May they never go back to the life of mistakes. It is well with you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, you can go back. Can you clap your hands for Jesus for their lives?
Yes. May the Lord give you strength. May the Lord give you grace. Now you can be on your feet. While I was praying just now, I mentioned worries. Worries. Do you know worries can destroy your spiritual life? Eh? And in this part of the world, we worry a lot. In this part of the world, tell me the time that we stop worrying. When, do you know that we worry before we go to school? Even to gain admission, we are worried. Eh? We, we pray for any, everything in Nigeria, virtually everything in Nigeria. We pray for life, we pray for safe journey. We, it's good to pray, but I'm telling you, there are some things we pray for that other people don't pray for. We pray for Nepa. Tell us, they pray for Nepa. For Nepa to bring light. Is it true or false? Are we supposed to pray for Nepa? Nepa is supposed to be constant. Other than my circumstances, you're not supposed to pray for it. Maybe what you're supposed to pray is that God should keep them constant so that uh, wind or storm will not disrupt, uh, disrupt them. The supply of power. We pray to gain admission. We pray, even after receiving admission, we pray so that evil lecturers will not sell your slots. We pray to read. We pray to write exam. Even after writing, we still pray for God to touch the lecturer so that he will not uh, fail you. Because there are some, whether you pass or not, they will fail you. We worry to graduate, even after graduating, with our first class. We still worry to get job. Even worry to marry. After marriage, we worry about whether children will come or not. Even the marriage, you know we worry because of evil people that we attend the marriage and we fast and pray. Life of worries. Even mama, you still worry for your grandchildren, for your great-grandchildren. Every time you see people lifting pictures up, the same pictures, the pictures we even wash. Sometimes when they bring pictures, man of God, pray, this is my daughter, this is my son. You don't see the face again because it has washed. The face has washed away. It's only God who knows who is in the picture. Life of worries can destroy your spiritual life. Recently, I knelt down and I told God, God, this thing, I don't want to pray about it again. I don't want to worry about it again. Give me grace. <laughs> and I want you to pray that prayer. I want you. Uh, did you hear Avika preaching on, is it Sunday or New Year Day? Is it Sunday or New Year Day? New Year Day. That he was asking God for something. One year, after so many years, he said, I'm not going to ask God again. And that was the year the thing came. Sunday, Abby. Sunday. He said that was the day the thing came. I want you to pray that prayer. I want us to live like, live very simple lives. Simple lives. Lives without worries. Is, maybe, there, maybe there is something that is a problem to you. <laughs> I know I'm talking to somebody. Something that is eating you up. Even when you have eaten, you don't get fat. Because something is always eating up your mind. Can you drop that burden? Today the Lord will give you grace. Can you drop the body? That Lord, I am dropping this body. I want to give you some time. That God, today is the last time I'm going to ask you or pray about this thing. Can you drop something? One load is going to leave your life now. Heavy load will leave you. Heavy load. God is talking to somebody. Heavy load, a very heavy load will leave you. You will see the freedom. This thing, I am dropping you. In this house of God, I am dropping you. Today, I'm dropping you. Not going to disturb myself about it. Not going to worry myself about it. Today is the last day you will be a concern to me. Fortunately, some of the things we cry about, some of the things we fast about, have no value to our lives. 
They will not add any value. And the Lord knows. Mention something. If you are the one I'm talking to. Mention it. Tell it to God. A song says, take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there for him. Leave it there. Take it to him and leave it there. Round up your prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you rise up? If you are are sitting or kneeling, can you rise up? Lift up your two hands as we lift up the whole of this year before God. Open your mouth and talk to God about this year. That this year, this year I will fulfill all that God has proposed in his heart for me. I am not going to fall by the wayside. I will fulfill all that God has proposed in his heart for me. I must fulfill all of them. All that God has proposed for me. I must fulfill them. I must achieve all of them. Satan will not stop me. Demons will not stop me. Family powers will not stop me. I will achieve all that God has planned for me. Pray for your helpers. Pray for the ones you are helping. That God Almighty... That the power of God Almighty will see them through. This year, 2020, let it be the year of fulfillment. The year of divine fulfillment. At the end of this year, there should be rejoicing. Lift up January before God. Lift up February, March, April, May. Lift up the remaining months. Lift them up before the Lord. Lift up the empire months before God. That God, you will reign. Run up your prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift those hands up again. You are going to ask God to be your friend this year. You, don't know how, you may not know how, what it is to be the friend of God. Ask God, God, befriend me this year. This year, befriend me. I want to be hearing you speaking to me. This year, speak to me. Direct me. At every point in time, speak to me. Whenever I lie down to sleep, let me hear you speak to me. In my dreams, masquerades will not pursue me. In my dreams, let me talk with angels. In my dream. Let me experience the presence of the divine. In my dream, may God communicate with me. In my dream, may I receive divine directives. In my dream, let me communicate with my maker. This year, Lord, befriend me. Let me have a loving relationship with you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Lift up your materials. Pick your materials and lift them up. If you are here with anything, pick it. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who will never fail. He never fails. Never ever fails. Forevermore, hallelujah, I have a God who never ever fails. He will never fail. A God who never fails. He will never fail. Never ever fails. Forevermore. Oh Lord, our King, we know you don't fail. Kings will come and go, but you remain the same forever. Lord, look upon your children with mercy 
and release your power upon these materials. Release your power of fulfillment upon these materials. May your faith work for you. May your faith work for you. May your faith work for you. Every power of darkness that wants to pull you down, may the power of the Lord bring them down. May the Spirit of God bring them down. In the name of Jesus, I release the power and the presence of the Lord upon this water, this biscuit, peppermint, your phone, your drink, your salt, your water, anything you are lifting up, including your phones. Carry the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever thing that brings you into this house of God, let it receive divine attention. Let it receive divine attention. You are blessed. It is well with you. Thank you, our Lord and King. Thank you, our ready man. Because we know you have answered us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Shout hallelujah. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at hosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.